And if anybody knows anything about what it's like to have to check other people, and uh, Lord knows she's uh, been through it one too many lot. times at his home. And, and I have said before, uh, you know, everybody knows that Nina Turner is a personal friend of ours. Um, I have never seen somebody with more tolerance as a black woman than the moment that she was confronted on CNN by Hillary Rosen of SKD. Oh, you're talking about that time a few years back. Oh, my God. God, this lady this is basically how should be sainted. For I this. mean, this lady basically told Nina to get back on the plantation, and the fact that Nina was willing to just—I was, I was, be, I was beside myself, and I am not easily like I don't easily get upset about anything. Oh, I would I was like, to, I, I would have grabbed not her by her hair. That Nina sat there and took it. Yeah. I would have grabbed. She didn't. It's not that she wanted to take it. It's like she was just trying to be as professional. As humanly possible. I would love for it. someone like Mo to be in something like that and have someone oh, that say that and see well. what happens. No, Mo would have said, "All right, girl, I'm going to find you, and we're going to have it." No, out. she. I think she would jump across the desk. Well, that I don't know if they were at the same. I don't think they were in the same place. I think it was. Oh, that's they right. They were there. Because yeah, I, I highly doubt that Hillary Rose would have talked like that to Nina. And I person. felt like jumping oh, no, through man. the TV and grabbing her by her hair when she said that to Nina. A hundred percent. So, as many of you know. There was a primary. Yes, it actually happened. There was a primary <laughs> in Michigan two days ago. And the results of that primary indicate that President Biden's in a lot of trouble. I didn't need that primary to tell me that. But what's funny is they're going to sit there and try to downplay. They actually are now having to fight against uncommitted. They're actually now having to downplay 100,000 plus uncommitted votes. Now they could sit there and they could say it's whatever percentage it is. I don't know whatever percentage it is, <clears throat> but they had record turnout for this. And I assure you it was for uncommitted and that is absolutely. And so they could downplay it all they want, but he only won Michigan by what? What did he win Michigan by in 20? Like 150,000 votes or and something before, like that? And before we start, and it, it, actually it was, uh, yeah, it was 13%. Okay. And unfortunately, the other people who were not in there, uh, there are those who are voicing this opinion about um, about Marianne and Dean and the fact that, you know, they were still running technically. Look, the fact of the matter is a lot of those votes were cast early and that's where they came from. Do not send your money in that direction. But don't, please, point. please don't. Don't support that. If you have causes like what's happening in the state of Washington, where the biggest labor union there is also pushing for an uncommitted vote in their primary, because remember, there's still a primary going on. Yeah. Whether people want to admit it or not. Do not support. Do yeah. not support at this point any campaigns in the Democratic primary. Just Thank don't. you very much, Chris. And anybody else who has not it's, smashed that like silly. button, make sure that you do. We want to get as many people in here as possible. The numbers are picking up. We're around 30 now. We we want to get to that 50 number, which is what we've been cruising at consistently as of late. So now, as we mentioned, we are going to talk about our good friend who was on the CNN panel. This makes post me angry. this uncommitted vote the other night, 100,000. Nina Turner was not holding back regarding what this actual vote means in the grand scheme of things. And Anderson Cooper has been dead to me for a long time, but this just He's is. a Vanderbilt. He doesn't care. So here we go. These voters are doing is raising their voices and saying this is an issue that matters to us tonight. This is an issue that matters to us tomorrow. And the White House needs to listen. And I think the White House is listening to that message. But, you know, this is if he's able to reel off these successes, then this then tonight actually will be a success for all. And you'll have a different outcome come uh, November because I, I, I'll pass it to Nina or, or whomever can help me understand. Just remember, his name is not Bakari Sellers. It's Bakari Sellout. And I'm sticking to that. So just wanted to put that out there. This, but I, mean, I don't happy. think for many voters who are voting uncommitted that they're going to vote uncommitted and then say Donald Trump is my choice. I think this is a I think this is more complicated than that. Yeah, I do agree with you, Bakari. I mean, no one that I interface with said that they wanted to vote for Donald J. Trump. How There is a however here. And I think sometimes as we talk about this issue, we're making it, we're centering President Biden. We are centering former President Donald J. Trump when the uncommitted effort is to center the people closest to the pain. And that is the Arab American community. That is the Palestinian community. That is communities that care about peace. And so while this president was in the ice cream shop saying, I think there's going to be a ceasefire, 30,000 people have been slaughtered. That is the truth. And, 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 there is and no, she's, she's somehow the problem. Yeah, there, there is no... 
there's no glossing over this. And like you said, the whole image of him licking the ice cream. That is his saying, legacy. That will maybe we'll be. maybe we'll get around to the ceasefire in about seven days. He's licking we'll ice cream. Again, and I say this seriously, whoever on that team allowed for there to be a press interaction while he was eating an ice cream cone that create that will now be the forever meme of his legacy, that person should never work in politics again. Whoever I don't care what his head is. The fact that they let the press question him in that moment and that is so uh, they're not even trying to look competent at this point. No, and maybe they like you said, but as I've pointed out many times before, if Trump does get in again, I don't think the Dems are going to have anywhere near the success that they had last time when it came to fundraising off of him. I don't think it'll be anything like it once was. And by the way, Nina looks fabulous. She does. We'll continue. People are living in famine. They can't get medical care, so it can't come soon enough for them. And that was really the weight that I picked up on when I was in Dearborn. So we get to be comfortable and talk about this like these people are widgets when they are, in fact, suffering. And I am young enough to remember, colleagues, when Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and also Congresswoman Cori Bush called for a ceasefire very early on, they were called abhorrent. Now, fast forward to all of these bodies laying in the wake and people who are living through this every single day. So, I, I, oh, you know, you know that Anderson, that. you know that Anderson is getting the talk. Somebody from said, the cut producer, her off. Shut, shut her up, up. shut her up. You, he, it, it, as soon as she mentioned Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush, somebody said, that's enough. You got to stop her. But she's not. By the way, there's also been slaughter in, in Israel. I was going to well. say. So, so, yeah. so there, there's, yeah, no, there's a get, lot of pain on like both sides. It both sides. It very important. Wait, but not wait until sides. wait till you hear what he says when he gets cut off. Wait until you guys hear this. Both sides. But no, so I'm not. Really I'm not a lecture on the problem. No, but I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the, okay. the politics. Clearly, of, you do, Anderson. See, he says we don't need a lecture on the problem. We don't need a lecture on. We don't need a lecture. Quite frankly, Anderson. Why don't, you, why don't you really go where you would like to go or where anybody would go if they could get away with it? We don't need a lecture from the colored woman on the panel to tell us what we already know. We don't we need don't a lecture. We don't fucking care. Because you don't. And yet, I'm looking at people that are not... I and cannot imagine she, people more in need of a lecture. The way that she is able to do this with such oh my God. persistence without being like, you really can't help but just throw tropes in my direction, can no, you? No, not like, just that, but, but just we the, the don't need a it. The, the way, I mean, honest Ugh. to God, when you say we Stay don't need a place. we don't need a lecture, we invited you on here as the token guest. We didn't invite you on here. You actually, tell us to things. tell us things. Not allowed. No, you're just supposed to sit there and look pretty. Mm. This tonight, how? What to you would be a victory, as somebody was calling yeah. for this uncommitted vote, what to you would be a victory tonight on, to get that message That's, across? I'm not denying that pain. All I'm saying that at a certain point after October the 7th, it becomes clear. I mean, you have a right-wing prime minister. Right. We don't need to debate said, the issue. But, but you understand what I'm saying? I'm not no, denying the issue. He cannot, and you can tell. Listen, I, I love her, but I can tell that she was rocked by his reaction. Like there's something about the way he responded to her as if to say the, like, con the level of condescension was borderline, you know. Like, I don't know. I don't think she's thinking and like, I don't think she's intimidated by Anderson. I don't Cooper. think she's intimidated. I just think <clears> when <throat> somebody talks to you like we we're not here for your lecture, like that's almost like why we're not here to debate the issue. Oh, OK, you're right. You're not. You're there to be a stenographer of the state. Him. This guy is the son of a Vanderbilt. Like, do, do people, a lot of people don't know that. No, and, but even, so, let me tell you something. I used to respect Anderson Cooper because back in the day, he actually was a journalist and he actually was pretty decent. Look, just like Rachel Maddow. Look, there were people that back at a certain point actually had a function. Anderson Cooper was actually somebody that specifically never used his Vanderbilt name and specifically did what he that did. That doesn't mean that doors were no, not open No, of for course him. it doesn't, but he never is someone... I'm just saying, like, I used to have respect for him. He's been dead to me for years at this Nepotism point. Nepotism to I, the max. I understand that, but he doesn't advertise being a Vanderbilt is my point. Finishing it off. Anybody's pain. What I am saying is that this president and our country has the power to say to Netanyahu, 
We need a permanent ceasefire. The only time Within hostages... Reason, though, if I can only, push back Wait, here, one I more can... point. The only time hostages were released is when we had that brief ceasefire. That is another reason I, I why mean, I, I, we I, need I don't, a permanent but I, ceasefire. I also, I also have to remind people we had a ceasefire prior to October 7th. No! Right? I mean, like, that... like I said, <laughs> that's right. Ah! That's why your name is Bakari Sellout, and oh. everybody should be calling him as such. Oh, my God. That's not... Okay. I, that's so infuriating to me. Okay. Well, first of all, I find it always very telling that anybody who thinks of a situation as peaceful when there's no justice actually thinks it's real peace. Peace can only exist with justice. Those things that, that you cannot have peace. You, ha you can have oppression. You can keep people quiet. You can stifle them, but it's not peace. And the fact that he would even refer to that as a ceasefire, he is He's getting a nice big check and a big pat on the oh back. Oh my for saying God, that. somebody. That's a point. And I, I, I get centering people, and I, I completely understand that. But I think, Anderson, your point is valid as well that there is a lot of pain to go around, and we cannot forget that. But I'm talking about a tangible solutions. That's tangible, uh, tangible solutions. Tangible solutions from this guy. Yeah, Schultz, um, his mother is Glory, was Glory Vanderbilt. Um, his, yeah, because. The reason he's Cooper is when she, his father was Cooper, and that was her, I don't know, whatever husband, but it doesn't matter because she's a Vanderbilt. You know, Nina used to, Nina's always said that skin folk ain't necessarily kin folk. And in this case, oh, I the fact that. that Bakari is trying not to offend Nina, but also please his masters is really pathetic. Where is Tim Black on this when you need him? I, I'm going to have to there see. There was it. a ceasefire before October 7th. And what about the 700 Palestinians that were murdered just in the year in question prior to October 7th by the IDF? I'm more upset about just how they were talking to Nina Turner, quite honestly. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, Please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.